Here I am, Beyonce, a.k.a. Morpheus. Today in the Academy of Wow Men, we're going to go ahead and go over the discussion that uh, I had in the interview <clears throat> with one of my viewers named Brian. Some of you are familiar with that uh, that interview. It was very, <laughs> it was very funny. It was very entertaining at the same time. I came up with all kind of uh, <laughs> uh, interesting scenarios. But um, this is going to be a, a recap on that. Should you be somewhat at a loss of what we were talking about, and we're going to discuss Brian's standpoint of view because we had a little small discussion before we began the interview everything was pretty much live by the way and it was unscripted and because it was such an unscripted thing I had a, a, a difficulty I was on the edge of putting him out versus uh, dealing with him in the alpha way that I usually do but I wanted you all to listen and hear what we had to say, even though a lot of it was a bit convoluted and and uh, misunderstood. But I gave you my best to give you the points that were not only valid, but very important. All right. And so we're going to discuss several things that he talked about. And I wrote some of the notes down here. Let me go ahead and uh, bear with me for a moment here as I put <laughs> pull it out because he said several things that I don't know where he get that idea from but he talked about it so I'm going to go ahead and address it here pull out the paperwork now okay yeah I see it now yeah I wrote yeah see I went over the discussion and I, I listened to it again for myself And um, I couldn't answer it all because you see the audio is just extremely long. It's about two hours. The, the interview was a long time sitting there with them. And it takes a lot of patience to do that. And you really have to, you really have to have a cup of coffee and have a full night's rest to deal with somebody who you are otherwise trying to teach. Because apparently, as you notice, the guy was a, a bit uh, immature and, uh, Looked like he was looking for his, uh, you know, his mother's nipple on the often. So he really needed a little assistance from a, from a real male. So that, that particular guy, like many of the blue pill, uh, ridiculous betas, uh, need somebody to steer them in the right direction. Okay. Cause they just, they just so pathetic in their thinking. So one of the things he talked about, one of the number one things in the beginning of the audio when I discussed about dealing with several women at a time. He said something about uh, women wanting attention. And they begin to say, where are they women, man? And women, they're going to want attention, man. And they're going to they're gonna want to vouch for who you are spending more time with or who you're giving more of your energy with and more of your, uh, your resources. And Let's go ahead and talk about this for a moment because I know it may be confusing for a whole lot of other people as well. Maybe even for you, you may also even agree with him based on probably, and I'm not dousing you, probably on your small mindedness because he, he himself was rather small minded. So I got to help you guys out before you make a failure of your life. So here's the thing. We're talking about a caliber of man, like I just discussed, a caliber of man and the situation. Now, when you work in a nine to five job, and here's the thing, when you work in a nine to five job and you're always busy, yes, you're going to have a little bit of time to spend with your women. You're not going to be able to shuffle them like you need to, to balance out the interest or the time that you spend with them because you want to give your women all your attention and your time, your energy, your loving and make them make them feel comfortable with you. Just as what you would do when you're with one woman. OK, it's the same thing. you got to balance it out. What is on the left should also be on the right. Life is based on balance. 
But everything isn't based on donkey dunking, or in this case, for some of you who don't understand and who is new to this academy, okay? Everything isn't based on sex. Sex being donkey dunking. There is more of an interaction that you have with your mate than just inside of the bedroom or wherever you decide to do your hanky pinky. Most times with women, yes, it is attention that they need, but also they need your uh, sense of exclusivity, your sense of uh, concern for them and your sense of giving them the energy that you have according to the agreement that you all have depending on what type of relationship you're in whether it is monogamous or polygamous relationship which we're going to discuss in just a few minutes okay so therefore the branches of this is two particular branches when you're working all the time you're going to struggle you got a nine to five job not to say that it is going to be impossible it's possible but you're on a very limited uh, free will sort of parameter um, that will either limit you or control how much time you spend with your women in whom you've made a contract or a promise with. But then also on the other side, you're talking about a retired situation. When you are retired, when you are retired where you don't have to work, you have all the damn day and time to spend with your girls you can take them somewhere they can be on the boat they can be on a yacht somewhere you can take them out of town you have all day you're retired you're you're okay you are well this is a good example of some of the older men who are retired in the past like playboy mansion or uh i, I don't know any specific men or the specific names but in the past there's been several of them who was very wealthy and they didn't have to work. They were retired. They had all the money that they needed. All they need to do is just live their life. Or you hit the lottery. You become a multi-millionaire overnight. Or whatever whatever the universe decide to bless you with will give you the advantages of spending that free time with your women where there isn't a struggle for your attention. You're not working. You're not practically wasting eight hours to 12 hours out of the day doing something else, you are transferring that time to your women. You invest in them. Do you comprehend what I'm saying? You have the time to do so. So therefore, you're not struggling as to uh, your inability to be with them. They are with you on your boat. They're with you in your cars. They're with you wherever that you go and whatever that you decide to do to at least uh, keep them entertained and happy with you or are you just normally living your life and they are enjoying your resources should they be qualifiable to do so are you understanding me so that's a different total that's a totally different caliber of man that that child didn't understand because you have to be a small-minded individual not to comprehend that um, you in your small circle you may not be able to you may be struggling with your nine to five. You may be uh, dealing with a situation where you got yourself married or you are a monogamous type of guy. So you're willing to limit yourself. You're willing to uh, be satisfied with somebody for now. I'm not saying it's bad. It's OK. If you can do that, that's fine. I'm not against it because to me, family is important. Unifying is important. And I'd rather for a couple to be together if that is your intentions. But oftentimes it isn't because we are very immature. We are very redundant and because of our American lifestyle, because we are such a flop in our ideas here in the westernized civilization, okay, um, we are on the decline. So therefore, most times we don't know what we want. We don't know what we're getting ourselves into. We just do it because a lot of other people are doing it. So you become the sheep to do what everybody else is do. And you begin to realize after maybe 10 years or 12 years into your relationship, you want to try something different. Now you want to be an open relationship. Now you want to be swingers. Now you want to you want to talk to Susie, Susie, uh, uh, Micah and Solyndra uh, around town because you find it to be very interesting, but interested 
but you locked down in this monogamous relationship. Now you got to make moves and adjust yourself because you don't have long vision. And I taught you a, a long time ago to constantly have long vision. When you have short vision, that means you don't care about yourself and you don't pay attention to anything that Morpheus is telling you. However, since you decide to sign up with this relationship with one woman, uh, that's where you are. That's where you're limited. That's your fence that you're going to have to uh, deal with for your remaining time. But however, for you or for that particular man, such as that uh, beta that I was having an interview with, it is considered as impossible. Okay. And also you have a small mind not understanding that you don't have to work daily like you do if you are a high value man. If you got your own business, if you got your life going on for yourself, you have worked for your time and your freedom where you can utilize that time for whatever that you enjoy or that you love, such as your hobbies, such as your trophy sets. Maybe you like golfing. Maybe you like traveling. Maybe you just like going to several resorts. And when you have that extra time, if you decide to do so, you can spend that time on the women that is worthy enough to be in your circle. Do you comprehend what I'm saying? You do have time. It's only impossible who, um, for those who have a small-minded concept. Here's the thing on the next one. Women can't generally serve two masters. And nor would you want them to. And what that means is this. Oftentimes, if she has her own career, and she has a job that she needs to take care of. While she's taking care of the home, usually it creates conflict, even more so if she doesn't have a baby or a child and she wants to have one. Or she wants to be a stay home mom eventually over time. So it becomes an afterthought where the man or her boyfriend or husband makes enough money where he generally wants her to stay home. He generally want her to uh, be a stay home mom and just take care of the kids and raise the kid. But then as you know, she's still going to desire to make her own money. She's still going to want to make her own, uh, her own success or so to speak, financial income. And so because of this, something ends up neglected. There's a sacrifice that is made somewhere in the relationship or in the dynamic of the transferring of wealth that she is either generating or you are generating as a man or the man himself. So therefore, the ideal of it is, is when you have your own job, you, I mean, not your own job, your own business, when you are successful yourself as a man, okay, why not employ her? What that means is this, when you win, she wins too. Like, for example, when um, I was working on cars and I had a woman who would assist me in some sort of way, she'd go get the tools where I can't get it, or she'd pick up a part that I don't have the time nor the energy to go get, or if I need her to go uh, pick up a client or take a client home, whatever the situation be, she benefits from it. She gets a cut from my labor because she helped me with my labor. Or if I start a, a housekeeping company, okay, and I start the housekeeping company with 10 employees that go around the cities or towns or homes and clean people's homes and houses, clean out offices, and let's just say I have my girl uh, send them supplies, or my girl would give them the paperwork on their hours that they've done during the week. Because she's done this small task, She's going to benefit from this. You got what I'm saying? She's going to get paid by the success of my business that I have created because she's helping me with my business. And automatically, automatically, I'm going to give back to her. She don't have to ask. She, she's not going to have to look for a paycheck. I'm going to provide for her. So if these two girls, for example, are my main squeeze, or you could say my polygamous partners, are they just there with me? They're my girls, like I discussed before, okay? They're going to be taken care of. And the attention and time that I could be spending on a nine to five job or somewhere else is irrelevant because this is my business. You know, my business is um, becoming successful or having these employees, whereas I'm not doing a nine to five. I'm just pretty much a manager or a CEO. 
the owner, right? So with that growth, they are growing with me because they are supporting me while I am moving on to the next stages of my life. So the truest benefit of it is she's not serving two masters, not to say I'm her master, but she has this ability to be with me or underneath my criteria and my idea as to how my relationship should operate. Therefore, there's no conflict with me versus her other employees or employers uh, versus her PhD versus her career because we are operating together just as a, here we go, just as a marriage. Just how a marriage operate. You have the man here who's the lead of the household and you got the supporting wife who is motivating. She's inspiring. She's supporting. She's helping. She's adding, um, what do you call that? Adding quality to my production. She's adding quality to my life. And again, when I win, she is going to win. When I'm successful, she's going to be successful. When I am eating, automatically she's going to eat because she is there with me and she is an asset to all that I do. It's just as simple as that. But this type of functioning is, it, I may not be talking to you as a peon beta. All right. I may not be talking to the majority of men who are uh, lofty with their life and have no uh, future prospects and uh, they're not looking to better themselves. They're not looking to make themselves anything in this world. So this type of conversation is probably impossible for you to fathom or them who will say, well, no, I don't want three or four different girlfriends. I just want one of them. I want to be monogamous. I want to be stuck in a limited life. And uh, I just want to be stable and, and, and set with the conundrums, the society, the society's expectations and what my church tells me, what my parents tells me and what the, uh, the false traditions that are, that is not working anymore. Um, have told me to do because I'm a beta. Yes, you are. You know, so yeah, you, yes. Like Brian himself would say, well, that's impossible. I don't understand. That's impossible. You're talking about women here. Yes. We talking about women, but who are you? Are you a man? Or are you a little child? Which one are you? Take your pick. Cause we don't cater to weak, weak little boys over here. Take your pick. It's easy. It's not difficult to comprehend. But when you are small minded, it's difficult for you to comprehend. Because it wouldn't make no sense for you to have your business, you to, to excel in your life. And uh, you, you're having proper prospects in your world. But yet you got to be like one of these NBA, uh, NBA basketball players, right? Who they have their own success, but they have a woman on the side somewhere that his main squeeze will know nothing about because he don't want to be honest with her and tell her that he still want to play the field. So she got to pretend if she, she don't know nothing. She got to pretend as if she don't care that he's actually, uh, let's put it like this, sleeping with two or three other women that comes into town every now and then, or he will go and meet them somewhere at the, at the damn airport. You got what I'm saying? That's a dumb decision. And you are supposed to be a man. How the hell are you going to be a man? But yet you can't tell the woman exactly what you want and what you need. And at the same time, you put her to the point, you pushing her away where you know she wants to make money. You know she wants to succeed and she's going to do it anyway. You know she's going to want to get her degree somewhere. So why would you purposely live or sanction yourself up? Or shall I say sector your life where you have this big partition between your life and your wife's life or your your uh your girlfriend's life and you expect to have a successful relationship but yet you are supposed to be the leader in her world you are supposed to be the masculine male in her world you are supposed to be the only boss in her world but you're not the boss of yourself because you're a goddamn loser And then you wonder why you end up in a divorce. You wonder why the American society is broken now. You wonder why marriages don't last as long as they used to because the way y'all thinking is stupid. You understand? Stupid. Dumb. Why? Because you go along with the program and you don't go along with your nature. 
You don't go along with logic. You don't go along with what can be or what should be. You go along with what is. That's your problem. So because of that, whether you accept it or not, you think just like that child, Brian, that was in an interview with me. See, I don't mind people who play this hangman situation. I'll let them speak and speak dumb. So you can see exactly the differences between a man and a little boy. Because why you think you're limited, other men up there at the top are the top 10 to 20 percent. They comprehend what Morpheus is saying. But you, on the other hand, you're living a, a low frequent, low profile, low energy, low band of a lifestyle. And you wonder why you don't get laid. If I was a female or a woman, I wouldn't be with you either because you got a loser mindset. Women enjoy men who are ambitious. Women enjoy men who got a goal in mind. Women enjoy men who is the leader of that which they survey. And if they're going to be a boss, if they're going to have a business of their own, if they're going to be successful in their life, the woman wants to be a part of it. Do you got what I'm saying? And when she's a part of it, she's going to benefit. If she supports it, even more so. She is really going to benefit if she's this supportive, feminine, fit female that she is supposed to be. And then you can get along somewhere. You can go somewhere. But the more you put a partition between you and her, oh, I'm not going to employ her. My business isn't for her. No, I'm, I'm, a, I'm worried that she's going to try to take part of my proceeds and money. Idiot. That's because you don't know anything about the paperwork. You don't know about legal ties. And you probably don't have an attorney. Okay, you don't understand how it operates. It's not like it's impossible. It's just that you don't know how to control what goes on at home because you are a beta. That's your problem. So these things aren't impossible, but it is impossible for a small minded boy. Now we're going to get on to the next thing. So that's what I was explaining to him that I could not actually tell him at that particular point without breaking or hurting his feelings because he said, it's impossible. What do you mean, Morpheus? You're talking about women here. Yeah, they're women, sir. But guess what? I am a man. And one of the best, too. I know my place in this world. Sorry that you don't. No, I'm, I'm not sorry. You don't know your place. That's your problem. Now let's go to something else that he talked about, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my goodness. He talked about black women, that I was making a separation between white women and black women. Wow, wow, wow. See... When I begin to talk about building a franchise, building a connection, building a chain, building a life with my women. The first thing he said was, you must not be talking about black women because uh, here we go. My black queens, my black queens will never get along or do anything like that. You must be talking about Caucasian women because they they do something like that. Not black women. See, I did want to say this, but I'm going to have to talk about it. And it's not because I am being biased or I am speaking of anything that has anything to do with misogynist behavior or that I hate women. But I'm going to tell you exactly what it is in my studies and statistics and by facts. Sorry, men, but I am not sorry, but... Half of your beautiful queens can't even keep a stable relationship in a monogamous relationship, let alone trying to build an infrastructure. Get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here with that nonsense. Don't play with me. Don't play with Morpheus because I will cut you at the knees with facts. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. Is that why every time I go down the damn neighborhood, I may see three white girls running down the, the jogging down the sidewalk and I don't see no brown skinned female somewhere. Oh, my. Oh, Lord. I said it. I said it. I said it. I said it. But, you know, what? it came out of his mouth first. I'm just finishing it. You don't poke the bear. Well, I poke the bear because I expect the bear to do something, so I'm ready for it. But you don't poke Morpheus and don't think that you're going to get your head chopped off. I don't play like that. You can't come up in my face like a beta and don't think this alpha ain't going to step on you because I'm going to step on you and I ain't going to think twice about you because you don't think twice about yourself. Oh, shoot. There it is. 
There it is. So he brought up this like as if, and that's him, not me. Get mad all you want to. Listen to the interview yourself. He brought up black women in this conversation. Like, oh, my black queens wouldn't do anything like that. I'm like, okay, so what are they doing? Oh, shoot. Oh, my God. Morpheus. Oh, Morpheus, you really did it this time. Well, I didn't say it. I didn't do it. What are they doing then, if that's the case? If that's the case. Because if every time I go down Central Park, every time I go down Chicago Street, if whatever I go, I will see five white girls jogging down the sidewalk before I see any of your black queens doing the same thing. Oh, shoot, I'm in trouble now. Oh, hell. Oh, hell. Oh, hell. Oh, my goodness. But you know what? I didn't start this fire. He did. I'm just finishing. Y'all can get mad at the messenger all you want to. I'm telling you nothing but the facts. Get angry at your blue pill beta brown skin man who start talking crap like this because that's all he knows how to talk. You know what they say? Uh, what's in a man comes out. That's what he's full of it. Full of BS. And I had to explain to him, it has nothing to do with black or white. My circle is open to pretty much all colors or races. I just don't deal with ratchet, dysfunctional, hood, low-ranking, non-performing, ignorant, backwashed, silly, upside down individuals that's going to be a problem for my life and for my business and my for, my, for my infrastructure if she just so happened to be black she so happened to be black if she just so happened to be white she just so happened to be white but guess what i'm keeping tabs and i'm making check marks each time so i will know who's going to be more of a problem for me or not they have nothing to do with me and my preference is because it is for my safety that's something that he don't understand because as a beta as an american uh, americanized pamper wearing boy okay him he cannot comprehend that it is outside of the spectrum of color it's based on performance you got me <laughs> now that should clear up that subject it's based i operate in performance let me say that again for some of you who just halfway damn near retarded I operate in performance. If you are a low performing individual, that is your fault. And if it becomes frequent, according to, and now if it happens, it does, and it does, and I'm not going to get into it, even though I just did. <laughs> Laughter is on you. Okay. If it happens frequent by a certain culture or a certain type of people, then I know how to stay clear from them. That's why my top range females, whether y'all like it or not, is going to be Latina. She's going to be white or she's going to be Asian and Indian. The rest of you, sorry for your luck because I didn't create you. You created your own flop. I told you, don't you play with Morpheus. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. And I'm going to get on to why I say this in a minute. I'm going to get on to why I say that. I can back that up with a little bit of evidence, and I'm going to give you some experience myself. You can say, oh, that's your preference. Uh-huh, yeah, my preference is good for me, because guess what? I've been doing well in that circle. Well, no ratchet, no hood, no I'm I'm a crab in a barrel mentality. But I'm going I'm to I'm go ahead and uh, I'm going to polish that up for you in just a minute. So just bear with me. You know, keep your feelings to yourself and your attitude in check until you get the facts first. If you don't, you can exit stage left too, just as well as the betas and everybody else too. Now, uh, the third thing he talked about was he tried to assume that I was talking about training the 22-year-old girl versus the older woman. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, we getting into it now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we getting ready to get into it. And the explanation was very simple with him, which he couldn't comprehend. So he claimed basically that older women don't need to be trained. 
He claimed that older women know how to do the cooking. They know how to take care of the home. And I think he also said something about less of a headache because they're, they're more peaceful. They're more laid back. They're more calm. Okay. Which was a very disturbing conversation that we had because I really wanted to get, I really wanted to grill him, but I needed y'all to listen to the conversation. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to make it longer than what it was. It was already a bit extreme, right? It was a bit extreme. But let's go to one subject to the next. First of all, let's talk about the training situation, okay? She is a woman usually who has been there and she have done that and she learned the tricks of the trade. And because, as I've explained, women of her elk, depending on how old she is, let's say 45 and up, okay? She's had her share in her pick of the litter in her past life. So she have had to learn either the hard way or she had to learn through her experience what men need, what men want, and what men desire. See, men are automatically uh, taught when they're little boys what women want. They're automatically taught to be the protector, to be the provider, to say what needs to be said, or to try to work hard to be the best version of himself. But over here in America, that is, it's an American thing, women aren't quite taught that. They don't they don't see what men no comprehended. See, most times it's a result of hard labor. And you as a man, you're coming up behind someone who's been through the rails as it is. So oftentimes you're looking at somebody who stopped fighting over a certain amount of time. She realized she couldn't get her way after a certain amount of years. She realized that whatever plans that she had as a little girl, it didn't work out. So she decided eventually to start lining up with a program or start lining up with what's required of herself versus men later on in her life. So that doesn't mean that makes her better than the younger woman. It makes her suspicious. Because how come they can't do that when they're 21, 22, 23? Even though men or boys on the often are told that that's what's expected from them when they are 21, 22, 23. Women on the often are told that they can go out there and get their career, go get a PhD and live their own life. Don't worry about a man. Don't depend on a man. So don't worry about trying to shackle down with them in their earlier years. But men are told to do that kind of thing. So it's a it's a disturbing sort of unbalanced society that only morons and sheep go along with. If you are uh, one of those bottle fed individuals, so you end up stuck in that baby crib of ignorance. OK. And the second thing, let's say something else. What was that? The training Oh, and the younger women being able to tolerate a younger woman versus an older woman and just wanting peace. Once again, that goes along with her having her years of wrestling with men and realizing that her program isn't working or wrestling with her mother or her religion or whatever lifestyle that she lived, she had to learn the hard way. And it still goes along the line of needing a retirement plan. Now, when I mean retirement plan, it's not specifically just financially because he did discuss that as well, where, you know, she's older, she got her own money. She already has uh, her own establishment. Well, that's what makes her even more um, at that particular point, pointless to get along with. Why is this? Because once a woman is stabbed, the more money she makes, the more unapplicable, unapplicable she is for a steady relationship because she spent all that money spending, I mean, mm -hmm. all that time making money or adjusting towards uh, her financial requirements. So it's difficult, again, to serve two masters or two lords at one time. So by that time, when she's out of practice with dealing with the uh, the opposite sex with the man, or out of practice with working alongside what a man needs or supporting his business infrastructure, she's been too busy supporting her own business and infrastructure where it makes her uncompatible. Did you hear what I just said? Uncompatible.
to be with the men. So oftentimes they are not the most married. They're the most unmarried. They're the most not well together. They're the most box wine drinkers. They're the most dog mothers. They're the most girls night out type of girls who pretend as if she is happy, but she's not because you got to go home to a cold house and her, uh, for some of them, their kids don't want to come and see them. Our great grandchildren don't want to come and see them on the often because she burnt her bridges. She chased herself and did not chase a man. So what he was talking about in his story, once again, completely wrong and completely a flop of ideas. Nonsense. Now, before I continue with what I'm getting ready to say that he accused me of Brian, that is, in the interview. Let me talk about my brown skinned girlfriends, for example. OK, because I back up what I say and what I mean. See, I have tried brown skin women but the two there are two things that's a problem in that circle one of the things that have really destroyed the potential of relationship is the mothers ladies and gentlemen let's a moment of silence please so you can hear understand what i'm saying the mother the mother Why is that? Because the mothers never wanted their daughters to be happy. That's right. The most, the bitter, older, brown skinned women were attacking their younger brown skinned daughters and preventing them of success because of the res residual anger, bitterness, and sorrowfulness of their failures and their flops in their life. They bled it over to their own children. So it caused them to fail miserably. And girls just being girls. I'm vouching for them here. Girls just being girls. They want to have a relationship with their mothers. Sometimes daughters want to have relationship with their mothers. And they wanted it to the point where they listened to what their mothers had to say. They were naive. They were uh, malleable. They was easy to be persuaded. And so because of their weakened mindset and wanted to comply with their bitter mothers, it caused them to miss out on a good relationship and to build up an attitude of their own because that evil spirit bled into the daughter as an evil spirit and therefore began to attack our relationship. So I decided to leave them alone altogether for that particular reason and others as well. But those are one of the main reasons. Then you go with the attitude, the ratchet behavior and and uh, not needing a man and coloring their hair and blonding their hair and and only knowing how to do the booty twerk instead of going out there learning some type of ballet like every other culture. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. I'm going to try to be funny here. Just don't 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 get me started on that because I can really tear up some stuff. OK. <laughs> However, so that's with that. So getting all the training with the older women, he began to talk about how younger women need to learn how to. Yes, he said that I didn't. That younger women were bare, was practically dirty. Need to learn how to wash up and older women don't. Older women are clean. OK, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring some clarity to that. Of what what I'm going to adjust here for a moment. OK. First of all, oftentimes they're trying to cover up something that's really stinky anyway. Yeah, I'm going to say it as it is. I am not attracted to perfume that much. Not like that. There's a such thing as modesty. But I am a very natural man. And I'm only attracted to the more natural the woman is. The more natural she is, the more I'm going to be attracted. And the more I am going to be, what's that word, Horoused by her pheromones and her hormones and her natural scent because I am a natural man. The more lotion she puts on, the more Prada perfume she wears, the more I'm going to consider her as a stinky vassal. I'm not going to be interested in her. As a matter of fact, we are not going to have any sort of connection 
because she has an artificial fake fragrance coming from her organic body and I'm gonna look at her like a machine okay so that nonsense that that child that boy was talking about mr. Brian okay is for bozo type of men who don't comprehend their own nature see as a very natural man in an organic sort of uh, entity okay I comprehend how nature should work and there are certain parts of the woman body that I only consider a bit the be all than the end all I can care less about anything else whatever's going on in her uh, what do you call that in her panties okay that must be clean that's that's a very important thing that is a that is what do you call that a non-negotiable okay her breath as well is a non-negotiable I've been in situations where the girl can be pretty she can be bright-eyed long hair but her breath smell like a skunk or she went to the bathroom and, and took a bite off of somebody's fecal matter okay we got a problem or it smells like onions I can't deal with that okay everything else is fine I can deal with her natural scent I can deal with her pheromones because that's who she is okay and the less of as I said the less of the perfume she wears and lotion that she wears the better it is that don't mean I need her to look like a chewy that don't mean I need her to look like Sasquatch and yes she has to be uh, what do you call that uh, trimmed definitely right she has to have a she has to groom herself I'm not looking for nothing hairy she should be smooth and clean smooth and clean of course that's obvious but as well there's a sort of moderation with that but however the older the woman get on the often times the more unnatural she becomes I've had my pick of the litter and it isn't for every type of woman out there but the majority of them at a certain age they really just don't give a damn they just let whatever be be that don't mean that they I'm not saying that they they uh, they uh, they become funky they don't take care of the body what I'm talking about is they wear perfume they wear fake wigs they put on fake items they go to the Prada stores they think that their extent of beauty is what they put on their body and their body is not the extent of their beauty did you see what I just said or do I have to repeat myself? I should not have to repeat myself. They think that going to get a nice looking tight pair of pants or a Gucci jacket and a very glittery type of purse and some funny looking shoes is the extent of their beauty and it is not. Because oftentimes any woman can do that but yet she can still be like 210 pounds. You got what I'm saying? She can still go out there and chop her hair off, color it an unnatural color that has nothing to do with her being an anime fan. She just want to be pink haired on brown skin because she think it looks good. OK, that's not happening over here. I don't need a cartoon character in real life. If I want to do that, OK, I'll go get a poster of an anime character and put it on my goddamn wall. You understand what I'm saying? I would need my woman to be natural as possible and simple as possible so we can have a simple relationship. But this boy, Brian, do not comprehend this because he haven't quite yet grew up in his life. And so have a lot of other men. Some men would say, God, I can't get over this woman. I love her perfume. Her perfume smells good. I can smell her through the hallway. I remember her because I smell her perfume. Moron, how? You're smelling something that's totally unnatural, totally outside of the scale of consciousness. I've did my research before in the past, and I'm not going to really get in detail with this. But some of you probably have an idea of where I'm going to go with this. I have did my experiment of being with a woman who wore perfume all the time versus someone who was natural. And I'm going to tell you right now, the woman who wore, wore Prada perfume or expensive other types of, of perfume that are available on the market. OK, she didn't mean much to me. She really didn't. She didn't have much that I was interested in at all. Yeah, we had donkey dunk for a little while. Then I'll send her on her way. But the woman who was natural, I couldn't get rid of her because of her pheromones, because she was in my system. You comprehend? It wasn't about her smelling like flowers. She smelled like a female. She smelled like her natural skin scent. And it stayed with me. And I appreciated her a whole lot more. So we bonded on a higher level than that woman who wants to put like this fake made up. Uh, what do you call that factory made perfume on her skin? To try to cover up her natural smell, which I don't comprehend why people, I really don't. It's not for me. It may not be for everybody, 
But for yours truly, your professor over here, that don't work with me. I'm going to tell you to go to the bathroom and wash that sh off. Come out smelling like the way you were supposed to smell like when you was a baby. If you can't do it, get the out. You got me? Now, here's another uncomfortable truth that we're going to talk about for those who are immature. But you're going to have to deal with it because we're here to raise boys up to be men. So you're going to have to take it. If you don't want to, too bad. There's other channels that you can listen to. I don't need you to listen to mine. You can go somewhere else. Okay, but you know, Morpheus don't care about your feelings. I talk straight facts. You don't like it, too bad. Go kick rocks somewhere else. I'm not your child. You understand? And I'm not your your uh, uh, your feminine, soft, womanized boyfriend either. I'm a man. And I could be considered as your friend. And I'm going to tell you straight up. Okay? The more natural she is as well as a natural man with more Indian genes than, than whatever. Okay? I can sense and I can smell when there's something wrong with her body. And so can the average man as well if he pays attention. Especially if he plan on donkey dunking with his woman. There is several smells that warn him that there is something going on with this woman. There is gangrene itch situations too. Of course. There's, there's, what do you call that? There's a biochemistry going on in her body. There's a word that I'm trying to find out here. It's a, uh, there, not just a PhD balance. There's a hormonal imbalance in the female's body that can be detected easily simply by the smells and yeah you can go deeper than that you you comprehend what i'm saying so when the more nat the more natural she is the more it is detectable and it's not hidden it's not hiding behind the mask of her uh having a a 500 501 body count in her past life and she's 45 years old yeah some of them have it like that and they got books on it too some women do keep a black book of all the men that she dated yes they do Yes, they do. Don't sit up here and say, oh, Morpheus, you're out. No, 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 no. Yeah, there's some women who do that sick stuff like that. You don't know about it because you probably boyfriend number 502 because you're the moron. Okay, or they keep it on their smartphone somewhere and you never know. You see this, this, uh, this notepad field from the front to the back from the boys that she was with when she was, uh, 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 in her early years in high school versus after she graduated from college. You don't know not one of them. Probably know a few of them. Your best friends are your brothers. And then you wonder why every time you take her in the bedroom, the donkey dunk, she smelled like she just came out of a fish shop. Or something's crawling along the floor. Are you going into a, a swamp somewhere? Oh my God, it just goes, I need to light some incense. Something's going on. Or she's, in a, she's over there spraying herself. She got to take a bath two or three times of the day. Something's wrong with you, sir. Something's wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going deep with it. I'm going in hard on this one. Yeah, I'll be sitting down watching. I watch this girl. Okay, and if she, she thinks, and if she have a habit where she thinks, oh, I got to wash up two or three times out of the day and spray on this perfume, I know something's up. Don't expect for Morpheus to be interested in you because I'm going I'm to vet you out first. I want to know what type of cauliflower that you're trying to grow in your garden. I don't want part of that. You comprehend? Something's going on. But she's trying to hide something. That's what this beta Brian did not understand. Oh, older women, they're just a whole lot more cleaner than young women. If the young woman is natural... She got natural sweat. She's just generally doing her day. She ain't trying to jump in the bathroom because she really don't have to. She's just natural. Why the hell are you messing with her? See, a lot of these beta blue pill retards, they're so Americanized where they're so set up to the mindset of most common women that, oh, you, you got to bathe two or three times out of the day and any natural scent is going to be considered as some type of bacteria. You need to clean that stuff off even though it's natural. When you are so far past your instincts, no, we are so far past our instincts, we don't comprehend what is real and what's not real because we want to mask everything. I don't mask nothing. 
I'm one with the world. I am one with nature. I am one with what it is, not what I want it to be. So oftentimes they played that game for so many years and oh, I'm just going to go to the bathroom, put on some Vita Al Sassoon. I'm going to shower up and I'm going to put on this body spray over here. I'm going to body spray underneath there. I'm going to wear this. I'm going to put on this type of curved soap and I'm going to really make sure that I'm squeaky, squeaky, squeaky clean so that there is no sense of no type of body pheromones or hormones or anything like that because I want him to think I'm a plastic doll. Get your plastic ass out of my house playing that type of game. As a matter of fact, I wish you would. The moment she tried to play that game, oh, I just got out of shower uh, uh, five minutes ago and nothing on my body is natural. I'm going to tell you, you see that door over there? Put on your raggedy clothes and your shoes and your fake hair and you get the hell out of here. I don't type play that game. If you're not trying to be natural, if you're not trying to be real with me, okay, you take your real ass somewhere else. I don't play that. But you know what? Betas don't have any options so they can't do that i have options i'll call up sarah tomorrow but hey sarah you know we're gonna hook up at you know five o'clock sarah's gonna come directly listen listen sarah as soon as she get off work she's coming over to my place as soon as she get off, I, i'm gonna take her all in all sweating all just the way she is because i'm gonna be evaluated but okay i know what, i know what type of day it is i know what she's working with she ain't trying to hide nothing do you understand? And she don't have anything. And I'm going to know if she does have something. She going to try to mask it. And don't try to sit your funny self in the car either and spray something on your body. Because I can tell. And that's going to be a complete turn off. And now you got perfume mixed with sweat. That's the dumbest thing you can do. Because then when you start sweating, you really foul in. Now you're just plain funky. Just come to me as you are. I'll do the rest myself. See, a lot of these American betas don't get that because you know what? They scared of nature. Y'all scared to walk into the forest somewhere and deal with how natural trees smell like flowers, roses, plant life, leaves, animals. Go to the damn farm for once. It don't smell all that good. Do it. But it's natural. We got so accustomed to peels, to sprays, to Febreze. To go into the store, you got a fragrance for every damn thing. A fragrance for your face. And so when something's natural, you want to be scared of it. If you got a spoiled, here's the thing, and I'm going to get off this bead and I'm going to go to the next subject here. When you go to, when you go buy some milk, okay, here's the thing. You do not want to mask the smell when the milk is spoiled. What you do is you open up the top and you want to smell to see if it's spoiled. Your nose and your senses will tell you, be like, wait a minute here. Wait, 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 wait. Something's wrong with this milk. And you'll look at the expiration date. Yep, it's a yes. It's like five days old. I've actually done that before in experience. I've, I've done that before where. Um, I actually, I, I thought that I brought a, a fresh gallon of milk. This was years ago because I don't mess with milk like that today. I told you I mess around with almond milk and stuff like that. So organic stuff, not drinking from a cow because I'm not a calf. Let me say that again. I am not a calf nor a cow. So why should I drink cow milk? Let's let this sink in for a second here. Okay. But um, I was really confident that it was a very it was uh, it wasn't expired. It was a brand new jug of milk. I just went to I just went to go purchase it. Right. So a day later, a good day later, not a week or a month or several months later, I go into the refrigerator and uh, I pull the milk out. And I, of course, I open it up the, the regular you know, activities that you do when you're going to pour you some milk and make a cereal or something like that. The, the smell hit me. And I said, wait a minute, wait, this cannot be, this cannot, this, this can't be the milk I'm drinking. And I was, I, I was looking at myself. I started smelling my underarms and I was like, it can't be me. Like, wait a minute. Now I know I just, I got through taking a shower. Did I miss a spot? You know, did I, did, did I, uh, did I go to the bathroom and I uh, didn't clean carefully and I'm just looking around and I'm just like, whoa, wait a minute. I, I, this is, uh. I thought about it. I said, wait a minute. No, I just uncapped the milk 
and I wasn't smelling like this before. I didn't smell this in my house. So uh, what did I just do recently? Recently, I just opened up the top of the milk. And I could not fathom that it could be that because, again, I just brought it yesterday. I just brought it yesterday. And, uh, yeah, that I'm going to get to that in a moment. Slow down. Y'all Y'all thinking too fast. Okay. So I put my nose in it. And I'm like, oh, man, this is smelling really bad. Like, oh, this this can't be right. Wait a minute. This can't be right. And I looked at the expiration date. Yeah, I know that's what y'all thinking about. Right. <laughs> I looked at the expiration date and it was it was a good expiration date. It was an old milk. So apparently, apparently, whoever stacked this milk on the shelf of that store it must have been sitting out somewhere or it must have been out in the sun or something happened to this product where it just so happened to spoil and it did have an up-to-date expiration where the expiration wasn't going to be to like uh well i think like three or four weeks later or i think it was more than that it wasn't three or four weeks it was like it was a pretty good expiration date so it was fresh it was a actually everything was accurate but it was my smell listen carefully it was my smell that told me everything the senses is very vital like that it was a smell that woke me up if i did not use my smell i probably would have if I if I didn't care, if I was like, well, you know, I, it's it's not expired. The expiration date is accurate. I just got it yesterday. Maybe it's just my senses. Maybe maybe uh, uh, maybe I took the wrong type of, uh, uh, I don't know, drink this morning. Maybe I woke up on the wrong side of the bed and I just poured this milk and I just started to uh, the, to eat the cereal. I'll probably be sick or diarrhea, something like that. Yeah, most likely diarrhea, most likely. And I'm just gassing up all over the place like, God, what's going on? My stomach is bubbly and not knowing that it's this milk. So I compare that or I use that same uh, that same example, that same experience when I'm dealing with women themselves where I don't need you covering yourself up. I need to know you for you. Don't play with me. Now, that doesn't mean I need her to come to me funky. No, that means I don't care about that doesn't bother me. I know who she is. I'm going to be a part of her chemistry anyway. I want to be one with her. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I said it. Oh, shoot. I said it. I said it. Y'all don't get that. Some of you soft hat, woman raised, child, children like type of dudes. Y'all don't get it. I want to be one with her. I can care less about that. Oh, I didn't bathe this morning. You want me to come over here? Yeah, I don't care. Just come on over here. This day, I don't, I'm, I'm not playing to play that game. Though. Just come on over here because I know what you're all about. Unless she has her, her womanly issues. That's a different story that we don't have to talk about. We're mature over here. I told you I'm going to go in on it. That's that. We don't even have to have that type of discussion over here. That's a no-duh situation, right? You're not going to play around during that type of month. However, normally, if she's clean, she's going to be clean. You got what I'm saying? If she is well balanced in her chemistry, that's going to be vital to uh, how we're going to combine ourselves together. It's going to be essential to understanding when she gets out of line or she's in line. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, y'all not ready for the Indian chief to tell you this, but I'm going to tell you, hallelujah, or I'm going to burn in hell. I can also tell, ladies and gentlemen, ladies specifically, what you have been doing. That's right. I can smell another's ma another man's energy on your body and his chemistry. That's right. Don't play with me. Oh, yeah. I know the difference. See, y'all don't understand this. I'm going to be one with her because I don't need y'all secret programs that y'all come up with and Oh, I want to see if my husband or my boyfriend's cheating on me. So I need somebody to set them up. Only for childish idiots. Y'all got to do that. I don't. Y'all so unnatural. Oh, I don't know if she stepped out on me. 
I don't understand. She's been gone for a week, but I got to ask her if she's been cheating on me because y'all, y'all operating in the unnatural circle of America. That's right. Y'all need cameras and computers for everything. Y'all need cameras and computers to think for you. You need somebody to, to vouch for you because you can't vouch for yourself. Oh, shoot. I said it. Yeah, I said it. Y'all don't like it too bad. Go suck an egg. Oh, oh my God. Oh, shoot. Oh, man. Morpheus. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I said it. I don't need to because y'all want to be so unnatural. I've told you before in my other audio before. I said nature is God. Being natural is a form of God and your instincts is very vital. And it goes this far. You can use these things for these small situations that you get yourself in. If you are instinctual. When you have a, a sixth sense, when you are chemically inclined and chemistry is everything, I can smell his goddamn energy on you. Don't play with me. Do not play with me. In the moment I smell something different, just like an animal, I'm going to sit you down and be like, excuse me. But what did you do today? And you make excuses, excuses, excuses. Well, um, 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 it's because, um, I ate the wrong food or it's because I didn't get enough sleep. It's because, uh, 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 it was a long day or I haven't bathed for a week and, uh, no, 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 ma'am, no, ma'am, 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 ma'am. You cannot lie to the Indian chief. I can smell you, ma'am. I know what you normally like. I know what you taste like. I know what you are on your good days and your bad days. Hell, lo. Is somebody understanding what I'm saying? If I preach it to you, oh, hallelujah, I'm a shout in the church here. Oh, woo, I feel the spirit. I feel it. I feel the spirit. Do not answer this call. <laughs> yeah, I know. But because y'all are so backwards normally, the common American person is so backwards normally where you don't focus on what's in front of you. Y'all all want to do things half-heartedly and around the bush. I go directly to it. I don't have that issue. So again, it's more than just her hormones or her pheromones and being one with her. It's the way it's supposed to be. I'm not an animal, but the animal kingdom got it correct. The birds and the bees got it correct. Eagles got it correct. Bears got it correct. Geese got to correct. Other animals know how to in sync themselves with their own kind, but the so called superior human being, which is actually not a human being today, but a decline and a zombiac individual. So, explaining this to that boy of O'Brien would have been quite difficult for him to comprehend because he will probably say, Well, you mean you want this girl funky? No, sir, that's not what I'm saying. Oh, you you love, you enjoy younger women because they don't know how to clean themselves. Yes, they do. No woman that I know of is going to walk out of the house without washing her ass. Do you understand? That's just plain stupid. She's a woman at the end of the day. For, so for the very reason for him to say, well, older women know how to clean themselves more than younger women. Apparently, he doesn't understand the makeup situation. Apparently, he'd been around older women who mask their natural scent because they aren't natural because their natural scent is like a box of crawdads. It's like whiting fish that's been thawed out all day on the counter and you come home and he's smelling the whole house of this stuff because he's used to it because she's been on the CC her entire life. So something's going wrong downstairs in her panty box. Why would a man or a boy put himself in a situation like this and he is getting better? And I was explaining to him, how could you as a 35 year old man getting better, get with a 45 year old woman who's been out there and got herself in some type of situation like that where she needs pills or she needs to wash up three or four times a day and cover herself up in perfume to prevent you of smelling the disease or backed up bacteria that she have allowed herself to ascertain. It just don't make sense. But you know what? 
these American bozo men think just like that because all they want to do is smash. They'll smash anything. That's just like he didn't even know what he didn't know who Patrice O'Neill is. Just like what Patrice O'Neill said, men, men will get a woman who is passed out drunk in the alley than to line up with something that's more decent for himself. So they don't understand when the snake comes to them covered up with tattoos and weighing 210 pounds and chop their hair off. And they're smelling like a, the factory of alcohol and perfume. That there's a that there's a problem there. They can't see it because they're too busy seeing with their little bitty Oscar Mayer. It's nonsense. Now I'm gonna end this one with uh, I'm gonna end this with the last statement that he said, and I'm gonna make this uh, the end of this audio. He said he wants a woman who has enough pride in herself and enough concern for herself not to be in a polygamous relationship. Now let's let's make something clear on this situation. The one thing men have to understand if you don't understand anything else that your professor is telling you. And if you are a woman and you listen to this, you may not want to agree because you are a woman. What woman usually is going to agree with the man who's telling them that they're wrong when you are in a country or a state which lifts women up and put men down? And when you have all the opportunities in the world and you benefit from it, why would you want to get rid of that benefit? So it's a common sense. But the fact of the matter is there is a hidden civil war between man and woman. It was never about, well, it was in the past, but now it, it's not about balance. It's about dominance and control. It's not about getting right. It's about going against the grain of what nature is supposed to be. So therefore, when you talk about this woman wanting to have pride in herself and don't want a woman to put herself in a situation where she's in a polygamous relationship and she didn't have honor to herself, that's not the way the world used to work. That's not the way it works anyway because men usually take the lead and it's based on him and his preference and he's going to supply for her if he's doing right. Unfortunately, women have been following the wrong type of men. Women have been marrying the wrong type of boys. Women have been making bad decisions of thinking that this guy is an alpha or he's a leader of his home but come to find out he wasn't he was not he was a player who didn't know he was a player you got what i'm saying he was uncontent who didn't know he was uncontent and he didn't know how to talk to his girl because he was raised up by a beta father or raised up by a single mother so he didn't know how to handle his manhood so he made a lot of mistakes but the woman did not know that but she followed him nonetheless because she didn't even know herself it was blind mice leading the blind mice but yet a lot of the women they carry that on into their adulthood and have unfortunately begin to say there are no good men in the world all men are just plain dogs that's all they are is just dogs they never know how to do right I always got to deal with them the way that we need to deal with them. Instead of standing by their side, let's just dominate them and take power and control from them. And let's control the situation ourselves. Because of those blue pill situations, because of those immature days, because of those ignorant times of non-self-discovery. In which they should have been discovering themselves before trying to get engaged in a relationship. But because, again, the audio I made a long time ago, grandma is gone. They had to learn the hard damn way. It has always been to the point where it was up to the man's standard. It was up to him and his protocol and how he is to abide by the order of the home. 
or to do what needs to be done based on his logic if he has any sort of logic. So therefore, you're talking about this guy named Brian, once again, who is ultimately a guy who's willing to be the passenger seat rider of his own life and be a blue pill beta because it has nothing to do with her having pride in herself or identity for herself. That's going to come along the way. That's just like a man saying, well, I need this woman to take care of my manhood. I need her to. Here's, a, here's an example right here. Um, OK, yeah, I'm a provider. I'm a high value man and I can do what I can for my family and my woman. Uh, but I'm going to make sure that she's going to provide her womanhood for me or her or provide for my manhood. I want to make sure that she's going to do what she can to make me feel good as a man. You don't have to, because once she's in the circle, even either she's going to or she's not. If she don't, you dismiss her. It's going to come along the way. But usually a man who is of his girth and of his quality, he's going to lead the path anyway. And she's going to fall in line. Most times it's not going to have to be a discussion. Yeah, you discuss what you require, what you do not require, but either she's going to do it or not. Either he's going to accept the energy that she's given him or she's going to deny the energy that she's given him. So it's not a question. So if she's talking about her pride and her honor or her feeling as if she's being neglected or not, that comes along with the programming later on. The initiation of it doesn't operate like that. Usually it is going to be an open platform. It is going to be a let's do this thing and see what happens situation after, of course, you negotiate because you don't know what's going to happen nor the changes after after the fact in the relationship. But you do put your footwork in first. But who has to lead the way? Who has to make it happen first but that man? If he is unbalanced, discombobulated, unsure, non-confident, a low-frequent guy, he don't have a business, who's not successful, who's doing nothing but staying at home, living in his mommy's basement, nothing is going to happen. He will always remain in the position where he's going to come across women who's going to only desire a monogamous relationship or... He's going to be uh, in the back seat of her Mercedes. Why another man is sitting in the front seat. You know, it's a shame. It's a shame that most men have decided to play the submissive role. It's a shame. It's a shame that most American men have jumped off the square for whatever reason that it may be in order to get him some donkey duck time instead of just telling women the truth telling them exactly what they need and what they want they usually don't even get to that point to where they have options men still should men should always tell a woman exactly what it is whether he has options or not and deal with the fact that he may not get any donkey duck time deal with the fact that he may not find a girlfriend Deal with the fact and accept the reality that he may not be successful in relationships because he tells nothing but the truth and only the truth. So help him God or in this case, the devil. Now, we understand that men have to lie in order to get what they want. But that catches up with him. That catches up with him because it begins to program the society or give women a false sense of success, a false sense that she has the potential and she really don't. It gives them the false sense that they can be entitled to the things that they are not entitled to because of these betas who just want a donkey dunk and have no future, have no future preferences. That's another reason why a lot of women don't trust men, because a lot of men don't have any future ideas. They're not trying to look 10 years in advance. They're looking only short term. What's going on below in their little little bitty small breaches. So there is no success, but always conflict. Why? Because we are literally dumb.
until we learn how to be forth be, be forward be forward be accurate look at things future tense understand that we need to be responsible for how we deal with our relationships nothing's going to happen nothing women need to be held accountable for their actions just as much as men do but men have been going along with the program for such a long time where they behind the clock they're disenfranchised and then they want to complain about they want to complain about their situation with american women I don't complain about the situation with American women. I know where the root of the problem is. It's a reflection in it's a reflection in the mirror. It's a reflection in the mirror. If you get your ass straight, she's going to get her straight. Oftentimes, they only carry along their habits and their ideas based on their past experiences with someone else. And so their new boyfriend or husband have to deal with it. You have to deal with the programming of another man. Oh, shoot. That's just terrible. That's just terrible. He have to deal with the programming of the man who came before him. So he's getting what, ladies and gentlemen? Drum roll. Ladies and gentlemen, what is he getting? Leftovers. So when you get them when they're when you get the women when they're more younger, vibrant, open minded, available, why they are processing the information of the world and you're teaching and helping them. That's not called training. It's called operating as a couple, as a team or making things happen while he is leading the way if he has the potential to do so. But how many times you're going to find a 25 year old adult male? Because he's still trying to discover what type of boxers he got on. Oh, I said it. Yes, I said it. You want to know more evidence? You want more evidence? Look at today's society. Simple as that. Look how soft men are today. And look at the type of women that they have created or the women that chase after them. You cannot, you're not going to sell something that nobody's going to buy. Let me say that again where you can understand. <laughs> Nothing is going to be sold if it's not brought. If they make a hundred thousand cars of a certain brand and nobody buys the car, guess what is gonna what's gonna happen? Guess what's going to happen? If nobody purchases the cars, nobody, I mean no one, not even the people who make it, if it sits out there, what's going to happen? You smart, you know what this, you know what's gonna happen. So if you have a if you have a hundred thousand women who are operating the way that they are today, that means you have a hundred thousand buyers and who's buying it. Yeah, you may have 20 or 30 percent of them uh, females of their, their own kind because it, maybe they're lesbian or something like that. Who knows? But the majority of them are heterosexual. The majority of them is the opposite sex and they are a reflection. They are a reflection of the seller. The salesperson is only going to be able to produce as much as they are customers. And because they are customers, they're going to keep producing. And who are the customers? Moronic, backwards walking, syrup licking, uncertain, unconfident, discombobulated, mama raised boys. <laughs> So instead of complaining about how women are operating, get your ass straight. Get your perspective in order. I'm talking about men here. They need to come up with a different standard. That's why, listen, that's why the title of that other audio with the interview with Brian, it said, if men had standards, if they had standards, look at the way that the generations have churned out to be. Most women want to be in a relationship. Most women want to find a decent enough man. Most women want an alpha, a Morpheus. <laughs> some, some women want someone to guide them in the proper direction as they are being guided by the energy of the universe or in some of your, your programming or your ideas, God. 
Therefore, they know they're being led in the right direction, but they're being led by boys. So therefore, they can't depend on boys. They let go of their hand and they begin to lead themselves and therefore leaving every other man who might have potential behind. Did we learn something today in this classroom or do we have to go through the studies again? Because if we have to, I will rewind it for you so you can comprehend something a little bit better and give you the language that you need. And it may not be English because it, it seems like we don't understand that. And that's almost a universal language. If you want something to get straight, get your own ass straight and understand yourself, have better standards and straighten out. Have a different perspective, then eventually the herd will follow. That's the definition of being a leader. That's the definition of being a male or an alpha male. That's the definition of getting things right. Get yourself right first, everything else will follow behind you. But because 90% of them are betas, you're only seeing a reflection of both the beta and the female operating one in one. You got Jezebel and her army. So guess what? The whole damn state and country is falling and failing because of it. And nobody's trying to stand up to change it. We are one generation at a time, one piece at a time, but not enough. Because before you get everything together, the war is going to be over. Then it's going to be too late. 